Welcome to Snooze with Sam. Ambient sleep stories, meditations, and ASMR from Scotland. If these stories help you, I'd love if you considered becoming a patron. You will be credited in every story and could access member-only benefits such as early access and patron-only stories. You can find the link in the description. My name is Sam, and I'm from a wee northwestern island called Skye. Like so many of you, I can find sleep difficult due to a number of reasons. So throughout my lifetime, I've developed a passion for helping people connect with and improve their well-being in every sense. The subconscious mind is a complex place. I understand the detrimental states we can arrive at and how precious sleep can become as a result. These stories have been created with this at their heart. So as always, lie back, take a deep breath, and enjoy this story. This story, inspired by Harry Potter, is called The Forbidden Forest. At the foot of the trees, the forest doesn't feel as intimidating as you'd expected. After everything people have told you about the Forbidden Forest, you've been apprehensive about going anywhere near it at all. Every professor has warned their students, including you, about the threats that lie within. Terrifying monsters, too terrible to name. Ghostly spirits and beings wrought with darkness, which roam day and night. Among many other creatures worth avoiding, But you are a student of deep curiosity. And besides, you are not alone. Perched on your shoulder 
is your beautiful snowy owl, Seamus. He's a distinctly Scottish owl, of course, having travelled with you from the Highlands ever since you left for Hogwarts. Quite content. His talons only dig into your cloak a little, in more of a reassuring way than anything else. His presence makes you feel safe. He's got Scottish grit running through his veins, after all. You've never seen an owl give anyone a Glasgow kiss. But you wouldn't put it past Seamus to do the honours against any foe, for that matter. Glancing behind you, you see Hogwarts School itself, set in the middle distance, adjacent to the lake. It looks so high up from down where you are. It's easy to forget just how perched the whole thing really is up on those rocks. The tallest turrets must surely stretch over 300 feet into the air. Quite the elegant masterpiece, you remark to yourself. Beyond the school, you can see the distant flying flags of the Quidditch pitch, only just protruding from behind the rocks on which the school is set. Each visible flag shows a different colour. Blue, yellow, red, and green. Each of the house colours. It's always been a game you've preferred to watch as a bystander, rather than participate in. You fear if you ever did play, an uninvited additional team member in the form of Seamus would start 
tackling your opponents, or stealing the snitch or something. You'd win, without a doubt, but fairly? Hmm, maybe not. The afternoon had presented itself with a gap in your day of around three hours. No classes, nowhere in particular to be. So you thought to yourself, toiling with ideas, Where are you desperate to explore? And so fast forward but a half hour, here you are, staring deep into the trees with your companion close by. You are ready. With a little sigh, clearing your head, you step forwards into the forbidden forest, alert, focused, and weary, but also deeply excited. The darkness closes in fast, creating an unnatural separation from the outside world. Almost immediately, you feel isolated from where you stood mere moments ago. The rather intense feeling of claustrophobia, slightly overwhelming. This soon resides, however, once you're accustomed to the space. Or lack of it, or so. You keep note of certain landmarks to ensure you don't lose your way. fallen pine, broken by the wind a couple of feet above the ground. The stump of an old oak tree, enormous and impossibly wide, probably a habitat 
to all sorts of wildlife, invisible to the eye. And a small trickling burn, carving through the spongy earth, barely tinkling away. You believe the reputation of this forest has warped your perception of what's actually here. You keep expecting to receive a fright or see something looming in the trees. But the reality appears to be vastly different. Relaxing your shoulders. Unclenching your jaw. You breathe in deeply. Drawing in all of the delightful scents of this lovely woodland. The result You begin to see, hear, and smell this woodland for what it really is. Suddenly, the chirps and tweets of autumnal bird calls fill your ears. Whereas before, you didn't even notice them. Above your head, the breeze stirs the treetops, rustling leaves against pine needles, creating the most soothing hiss. Another layer down, beyond the surface noises, the occasional bleat and baa of Hagrid's goats, A nice wee reminder that you aren't really all too far from home. Yes, calmness is now the overruling sensation in both body and mind. Glancing up onto your shoulder, you can confirm Seamus is feeling similarly chilled out. His eyes barely open. Doesn't even look like anybody's home. The minutes go by, squelchy footstep 
after footstep take you deeper into the forbidden forest. Something in the air changes. It's either temperature or a scent or a culmination of both. You can't be sure. His eyes opening slightly, combined with a little hoot from Seamus, confirms that he too seems to sense it. But he is not alarmed by it. Otherwise, he'd be flapping your ears clean off. You know Seamus. You trust him. He is calm. And so should you be. Somewhere off to your right, you see something move, albeit briefly. It was a pale, luminous something or another, moving behind the trees. Nothing twigged any recognition in your mind. Carefully, for precaution only, you reach across your chest, sliding a hand into your inner robe pocket withdrawing your wand. At arm's length, slight bend in the elbow, you hold it out in front of you, ready for anything which may appear uninvited. But then you think to yourself and pause. It is, in fact, you who is uninvited. You bear this in mind. Another faint little coo or hoot from Seamus gives you confidence in the situation. It will all be fine. Just stay calm.
A cracked twig resonates through the trees from behind you. Spinning fast on your heels, you cock your wand ready to incapacitate your foe. But you are halted in your movements, eyes wide and mouth open, completely aghast. Around twenty paces away stands the four hooved horse legs and the male torso of a centaur. muscular and assertive in stance, you subconsciously take a half step backwards from them. They must be at least ten feet tall. Be at peace, young scholar. I mean you no harm. Their deep, godlike voice booms through the forest, seeming to fill every possible gap beneath the canopy. You remain poised, weary of your unfamiliar surroundings. But you know, deep down, this being tells the truth. Other witches and wizards who claim to have encountered these centaurs tell tales of a peaceful, honourable kind. I feel I must warn you of your surroundings. The Forbidden Forest is home to many treacherous beings. It is no place for any lone witch or wizard to be wandering. But I'm not alone. You cry. I've got Seamus. As if noting his cue, the little white owl lets out a joyous screech of courage, flapping his wings slightly in an effort to assert his ballsy nature. I have no doubt of this Seamus's profound capabilities 
as a bodyguard. The centaur mused with a smirk. However, it is merely your luck that I found you first. Next time, you may not be so lucky. Realising there may have been some naivety at play in your decision to enter the Forbidden Forest, You nod your head slightly in acknowledgement of the centaur's wisdom and thank them for their intervention. You feel mildly foolish for disregarding the demands of your professors. But you are simply reeling from this encounter with a centaur. You've only ever read about them in books. What an incredible experience. Make haste now, please. You must leave this forest and rejoin your peers at Hogwarts. And please, for your own safety, do not return here. Turning your head over your shoulder, you look back in a direction from where you came. But when your gaze returns to the centaur, they are gone. Blinking, bewildered, You breathe a great sigh, realising you've barely breathed for minutes. Without a moment's more thought, you whisper to Seamus, to lead the way. And in an instant, he takes to the wing. Small but reassuring hoots, letting you know he understands. You run after him. Within five minutes, you pass the small trickling barn, carving through the spongy earth. The vast stump 
of the great oak tree. And the fallen pine, felled by the wind, a couple of feet above the forest floor. And then you see daylight. Without stopping, you break free from the threshold of the forbidden forest and keep running, aiming for Hogwarts. Beneath the sun of this fine autumn day, you run and you run, not looking back.